Hello all, thank you for joining and here you see me stood in front of two of this season's most popular wing boards, the new V2 Compact and the new V3 Phaser. We're going to have a, a brief look around these things, run through how they ride and, and find out what's changed on these two latest versions. So let's look at the phaser to start with. This V3 version marks one of the longest design lineages in the industry so far. It's the original AK board and still the most popular when you look at our sales figures here in the UK. It's a much revered board and it looks like they've capitalized on what it does best, pushing it further, especially in one key size. So like last year, the shape is rounded, which allows you to carve close to the water without catching. The rocker line is quite low and its subfoiling glide is exceptional, meaning that it only needs a fraction of the power to get flight speed when you compare it to most other boards. It has a carbon construction which keeps its mass exceptionally low and this is very important indeed. Mass and leverage is the killer of pitch control and keeping that weight down is critical. As such, you get a lot of info back from it which makes it a very, very easy board to master. Compared to the compact, it's more surf oriented and more practical for learning too, being so easy to get going. It has a lot of potential for crossover too, sup in the bigger sizes and prone foil in the smaller sizes. You'll see the smaller sizes shrink to teeny tiny boards that you can only really prone or toe foil. So what's new for this V3 aside graphics? Well, the 4.0 and the 5.0 are the same. These are the super small boards or lightweight prone expert lightweights wing boards for when it's super windy. Then we come to the meat of the range for wing surfing anyway, the 68, 78, 90 litre variants. And this is where things get interesting for the V3. For winging, the phasers have, well, for me anyway, one thing that they're vastly superior for, and that is getting going. Where it's gusty or light, if you're so inclined, every pump you make adds a knot to its sub foiling board speed, and that speed doesn't really decay. So as you continue, this allows you to kind of climb a ladder in sub foiling speed to the point at which you can lift off and go. And in this, they're quite astonishing. Now here's a clip of my mate Pete on last year's 65 litre board, and it's a classic example. It really is quite mad when you have the technique right, just how small a board you can get going. Now I, like many, have a bit of a disdain of big wings, and dodging wings of six meter and above is totally possible with phasers. So it's a massive plus point from me. For the V3 version, they've clearly gone further with this philosophy as in these three main wing oriented sizes, they've gone noticeably narrower. The 5.3 at 65 litres has lost half an inch of waist, and this 5.4 at 78 litres has lost a remarkable two and a half inches of waist, which is a lot. And the 5.6 at 90, well, that lost an inch. And that further increases the off-foil glide, the efficiency through the water quite a bit. The most interesting size here is this 78. Now, the 65 is almost a light wind board for me anyway, it's, it's just so efficient. But the 78 at 80 kilos, well, I mean, I can stand on that in a swimming pool and almost keep my ankles dry. So it's very, very practical. Now this one's lost a massive two and a half inches of width, so the practicality of getting this thing going is huge. Speaking from a mass market viewpoint, it's a very practical size, this one, even if you're lapping around the 90 kilo area. You don't need a lot of technique to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, and it's not a big ball board when it's up and going at all. The 90 litre shrank too, so if you're quite heavy, a little bit of technique's gonna crack that out you know, very, very easily as well. Lastly, the 510 at 110 litres and the 62 at 140, these are the same designs as last year and these prove very effective for beginners. Finally, there is a new construction this year. 
Last year, with inflation the way it was and the strength of the dollar, it was clear that the economy was not going to be on our side. And sadly, the price on these V3 mainstream versions has risen. To combat this, they brought out the Duratec. And yes, it's a slightly heavier construction, but it is significantly cheaper. And you must also know that board construction varies a lot right the way through the industry. And what one manufacturer calls their top tier construction, well, to be honest, another may call entry level. And the carbon phases are among the highest elite constructions in the industry right now. So don't be as surprised to learn that the Duratec boards are actually probably lighter than a lot of the top tier rivals. But I'll not lie, weight does make a difference. That said, first boards are not with you for that long, so this is a logical option in the bigger sizes. In the UK, we are concentrating on the Duratex in 110 and 140, specifically for first timers. Now, onto the compacts. Now this SIF 58 here, this was the board that I revered last year. I mean, I rode it more than anything. Once up, the compact was awesome for me at 80 kilos in 58 litres. Why? Well, put simply, pitch control. The short nature made riding virtually autonomic, and that proved addictive, as it did massively increase my learning curve, but there was a price to pay. Now, they are stickier in the water when you're trying to get them going. And then comes this, the V2. Now, first thing you'll notice that there are some new sizes, a 46 and 36 litre board below this smallest 58 litre from last year. Now, everything 58 litre and above has gone through a complete change for this season. There are no boards that remain unchanged at all, and this is a pretty solid investment for a range that sold so well last year. Looking at what they've done, it looks like they've started to try and nibble away at this Achilles heel of the design, namely that increased power consumption at, at sub-foiling speeds. And you'll see, compared to last year, the 58s lost an inch and a half of width, the 78, 85 and 105 lost an inch, well, and that's a fair bit. For sure, the decreased width aids efficiency when the board is displacing water at slow speeds. It increases the subfoiling glide. Now, why not make it as thin as possible, which would of course increase the thickness? Well, thick boards are less stable when you're actually up and going. They have less connection to the foil, a bit like riding in platform shoes, so there are limits as to how far you can go. And I've ridden the, this new 58 the most, and um, honestly, I don't really notice any difference in the handling when up, but I do notice the difference getting the thing going in light winds. So it's a definite plus, this new V2 version. As I already mentioned, the party piece of the compact is the control and feedback you have when it is up and going. There's something magic about these boards when they're up. I have my theories as to why, but suffice it to say, you feel like you're in that Goldilocks zone much more of the time. That, that zone where you're not waiting for something going wrong, you're, you're more focused on well, well, your next move than actually getting to the next move in one piece. Now it's a hard thing to put your finger on, but if there is a board that requires a minimum amount of consciousness to trim, well this is it. You just hand it over to the autonomic side of the brain and, and you just forget about it. The short nature of the compact, you know, was, it was originally favoured by the freestyle element for rotations and movement, but they've grown much more mainstream than that over the last year. The 58 for my weight at 80 kilos is a thing of wonder. Um, I have tried the smaller one and I did have high hopes for it, but if I'm honest, it's just too much of a headache to get the thing to the surface and up to speed for the benefit it offers of less mass. So 58 and this V2 version's reduced drag is definitely the ticket for me personally and my weight again this year. The other thing to notice is that these are built differently to the phasers. As a more hardcore freestyle oriented board, their layup is carbon and spectra, and as such they are a smidge heavier, but a very th strong thing aimed 
for a more sort of aggressive environment. You can't really breach the laminate. You can crack the glass out, but they are very strong units. Now it all sounds great, but there is that getting going caveat compared to the phaser. You know, put simply, you need a bit more power. Now, I've become better at pumping because of this for sure, and it narrows this gap and, and helps me compensate. But you don't notice it really compared to anybody else in light winds. Well, that is until you take out one of these phasers and then the difference is pretty stark. Sometimes, you know, it, it helps to really beat, spank and thrash the compact. And if you do, it comes up and out quite easily. And if you ride where there is wind, well, it's not really much of an issue at all anyway. And I would say the other thing that's really cool about these is they're short and they fit in your car and in your garage a lot easier than a longer board would. Now new for this year also, AK have made some new bespoke uh, foil board bags which come in a number of different sizes and very cleverly integrated with zips underneath so you can keep your foil in place and full access on the top. Interestingly, these bags are made from 100% recycled plastic, which is pretty cool. And they are absolutely essential in keeping all the scratches, bashes and biffs off these very um, expensive boards. So there you have it. Two cutting edge ranges for this year in an ever evolving sport. If you have any questions, please do, as always, leave them in the comments below and we will do our best to reply. So thank you for watching and I wish you a great year ahead, wherever in the world you may be.